This lesson is for geometry, lesson 3-2 on rotations. Yesterday when we did, or previously when we did lesson 3-1, students were given a protractor to measure angles. Students will need to have that protractor available today while they take notes. When we talk about rotations, I think most students have an understanding of what a rotation is. When you turn around or turn in some fashion, you are rotating. When you rotate, there are two directions you could go. You could go counterclockwise or clockwise when you make your turn. For math class, counterclockwise is going to be the positive direction. Clockwise is going to be the negative direction. I'm sure there's a reason why one is positive and one is negative. I think I would prefer if clockwise were positive since we're used to reading things in clockwise directions. So there's probably a reason why one is positive and one is negative, but I honestly don't know what that reason is. Maybe that's something we can look up later. When you do your turn or your rotation, there will be a certain amount that you will rotate. And the amount of that rotation is referred to as the magnitude of the rotation. Keep in mind that the magnitude should also include the direction. So if you have a positive magnitude, that means you're going counterclockwise a certain amount. If you do a negative magnitude, that will mean you're going clockwise a certain amount. When you're rotating, you'll start with an original figure, which we will call the pre-image. When you're all done rotating, your answer will be referred to or called the image. When you label the newly transformed vertices of your figure after you've rotated it, you'll use something called a prime. And I'll show you what that looks like with our first rotation. So we are going to do the activity that is in your textbook, page 120. We're going to rotate this triangle, and the triangle is labeled as PQO, PQO here. We're going to rotate that triangle positive 100 degrees, and we're going to turn it around point G. So first, let's just get a general understanding of which way this is going to go. If it's a positive direction, remember that means counterclockwise. And we're going to turn it around this point, so this is the center of our rotation. So our figure is going to go around this direction if we're doing clockwise. Now, if you think about what a 90 degree angle looks like, 90 degree angle looks about like that. So if we're going to be turning it 100 degrees, that's a little bit more than that. So our triangle is probably going to end up somewhere over here. So what we're going to do, and I've written the steps out already for you, is trace the figure if needed. You have it as your handouts. You won't need to trace it in this case. We're going to use some straight edges. So just use the straight edge of your protractor. We're going to draw some rays to connect the center of the rotation to the point that you'd like to rotate. So since this is a triangle, we are going to have to graph, or rotate, excuse me, we're going to have to rotate th these three coordinates. So let's just start with the one that's the furthest away from where we're going to rotate. Let's start with point O. So I'm going to make that a little bit larger of a dot, a little bit larger of me, little bit larger place for me to land my protractor. And what you're going to do is take a straight edge and just draw a straight line through point G and through point O. We're going to use that now to rotate our coordinate O in this direction. So we're going to go that way with it. So what you're going to do is place your protractor so that the center of the protractor is right over point G and that the base of the protractor covers over the line you just drew. And you want the protractor to point in the clockwise direction. So if I was going to just draw a quick sketch of how my protractor looks right now, it kind of looks like this. So I've got the center of my protractor right here where point G is, and then the curved part of the protractor is pointing towards the counterclockwise direction. And then what you're going to want to do is mark where the 100 is. So I'm just going to get rid of my protractor there, and I'm going to mark where 100 degrees is. Now make sure you go past the 90 and mark where 100 is. Now my mark is going to go way over here in my activity, right in where I'm writing the title of the problem that I'm doing. And that's okay, you might end up putting marks where the words are and that's fine. So I want to now draw a line to connect point G to that mark that I just made that is 100 degrees rotated in that direction. So now I'm just going to connect those two. 
point G to the mark that I just made. And I'm just using my straight edge for that. Now what I need to do is record somehow the distance between G and point O. So I'm just going to take either the edge of a piece of paper, or if I have a ruler, I'm just going to use my ruler. And I'm going to make that mark so that I know that distance just from here to here. So that's my point O. So I'm going to transfer that distance now to the line that I just drew. So point O ends up being about right there. And now we're going to call it O prime. So you just put a little, almost looks like an apostrophe, or almost like an exponent. You're just going to put that right there next to point O. Now I can very easily get rid of these lines. If you can't, if it's going to mess up your drawing to do that, then you can just leave the lines there. Now we're just going to repeat that process all over again for point P and for point Q. So I'm just going to talk through those steps uh, one more time. And I'm going to do them in a little bit different color just to help you visually track what we're doing. So again, we draw a line to connect G to point Q, and I'm going to make point Q just a little bit larger. So I'm going to connect those two with a straight line. And know that you don't have to make the line just that long. You can make it a little bit longer if you need to. I'm going to line up my protractor so that it looks like that. I'm going to mark the center of my protractor right on top of G, and I'm going to line up the bottom of my protractor with the line that I just drew. I'm going to mark where 100 degrees is. So 100 degrees is right over here. So now I'm going to connect G and that mark that I just made with my straight edge one more time. And then I need to record the distance from G to point O. So I'm going to mark that on a piece of paper, just that length. And then I'm going to record that length and transfer it onto the line that I just drew. So point point Q is going to end up somewhere over here, and I'm going to call that Q prime. And again, I'm going to get rid of those lines so that they're out of my way. And now I'm going to try this one more time with point P. So I'm going to connect Q, excuse me, P and G together with a straight line. I'm going to line up the center of my protractor right on top of point G and the bottom of the protractor so that it's on the line that I just drew. I'm going to mark the 100 over here on my protractor, and I'm going to connect that line and draw the line to P and the 100 degree mark that I just drew. Now I need to measure the distance from here to here, and I just do that with a piece of paper. I just put a mark there, and I transfer that distance onto the line. So now point P is about right there. And again, call that P prime. And let's go ahead and get rid of those lines now. I don't need those lines anymore. And let's go ahead and draw now my new triangle. So I'm going to draw my triangle by just connecting those points with my straight edge. So first I'm going to connect Q prime and P prime. And let me try that again. It's a little bit hard to do on my computer because my computer is a little bit slippery. Hopefully you're doing a better job on your piece of paper. Now let's do O prime and P prime, and then Q prime and O prime. I'm just connecting those with a straight edge. And again, I'm going to try that one more time. So there's my triangle. And so it rotated 100 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. And if I were going to comment about how I did, I'd say that my point Q looks a little bit like it might be a little bit too far, uh, it might be a little bit too pointy compared to my original, but your new figure should look very similar to your original figure. So let's just talk through the steps one more time. Uh, use your ruler or a piece of paper to mark how far you're rotating after you've drawn lines to connect it to the center point. And then you place the image point the same distance away from the center point as what you measured in step three. And then you just mark those with primes or those little apostrophes. So that's the basic rotations. We're just going to do a few more of those here uh, for the notes for today. Another example from your textbook. Here we've got a pentagon called Penta and its image. You can tell that this is the image because it's got the primes. And this is the pre-image because it doesn't have the primes. So you can see that here's the original or the pre-image. 
means this figure doesn't have any primes or any apostrophes next to the vertice names. And then this is the image over here. You can see that someone has already rotated the figure. We just need to determine what the magnitude of that rotation is. So we can tell here that they rotated it from here to there. So you gotta first determine what direction that is. Hopefully you see very easily and clearly that that is a clockwise direction. So if it's clockwise direction, we know that's going to be a negative magnitude. So whatever we come up with for our answer, we know it's going to be negative something. To measure how far it moved, we just take or grab one of the coordinates or one of the vertices. So you can clearly see that they decided to pick point A. They could have chosen any of the points on the figure. And they all should move the same amount. So if I just measure the angle that's formed for one of the coordinates, it should be the same for all of the coordinates. So they've already drawn some nice lines for us for A moving to A prime. All I need to do now is line up my protractor. So since I'm moving in the counterclockwise direction, when I line up my protractor, it's going to look something like that. So line up your protractor with the center point at G the base of the protractor on line GA, and then we're going to see where on the protractor A prime is located. Now we might not get it right on A prime itself, we just want it to be on the line that goes from G to A prime. So let's see if we can maybe extend that line a little bit just to accommodate our protractor a little bit better. So now when I line up my protractor, I'm going to read the top row of numbers because I'm going in this direction. So when I go from 0 out here and I read up to where this mark is, it's at about 65 degrees on my protractor. So if I was going to say what I think the magnitude of that rotation is, I would say it's about negative 65 degrees. If you're not feeling very confident about that, you could go ahead and choose another point, maybe like point P, and do the angle measure from P to P prime and see if you get the same answer when you do that. So sometimes the magnitudes will be there already for you and you just have to measure how far it went. Other times, like our first one that we did today, you're going to have to find the rotation itself by drawing the angles and then measuring them with your protractor. So now I'd like students to take a moment to independently practice this. Go ahead and pause the video and give this a try on your own. And in just a few seconds here, when you hit play again, I will reveal the answer. And so here's the answer. I know that my answer is not perfect. Like I said, it's super difficult for me to actually do this on the top of the computer screen. If I did this on actual paper, it would be much easier for me to show you the steps. But it does look very similar to the original. I've kind of got more of a pointy end where L is, and I labeled all my new points as primes. Make sure that you did a counterclockwise direction, and it should have been about 60 degrees, so it ends up turning um, up to kind of this upper quadrant. So there's one more here that I'd like students to try right now for part of the video and for taking notes today. Again, this is another one where the two figures have already been, or the figure has already been rotated. You just have to determine the amount or the magnitude of that rotation using your protractor. So again, I'd like students to give that a try independently and then pause the video pause the video first, try it independently, and then I will have you restart the video when you're ready and you can see the answer. And so if you notice here, the A is moving to A prime, so it's moving in the clockwise direction. So that's actually going to be a negative answer. When you line up your protractor, it's going to look like that, and you'll find that this number is about negative 115. If you said about negative 120, I'd probably accept that as well. So something in the one, negative 110 to negative 120 range is what I'd be looking for there. Remember that you don't have to just connect P to A prime. You want to connect a line through them and then extend it so that you can see where they cross each other on that protractor. So a lot of the questions in the homework have you trace pictures and then go ahead and rotate. So what I've done for you on your notes for today is I've photocopied those or printed those for you. So you can easily just go ahead and start working on numbers two, number three, and number four. There's two figures in number four, so I put it there for you twice.